I'm Willie Williams. I'm so excited because Impact 2023 is about to get kicked off. In January the 1st, we began our campaign. If you have been blessed by this ministry and you want to be able to partner with us in the work that we're striving to do in the future, we have a wonderful vision and a wonderful plan to be able to move forward. And we look forward for you being a part of this. If you would like to support, if you would like to give, our kickoff on our giving day begins January the 1st. We ask you to please pray about it, set those funds to the side, and be able to contribute to the work that we're striving to do. Listen, we are here to heal, help, and restore. We're looking to do a wonderful work, but we need your support. We need your help. We look forward uh, to seeing you soon. Beginning at verse 17, Genesis chapter 19, and beginning at verse 17. And the Bible reads, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for your life. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for your life life. Let me, uh, uh, let me catch you up to what's going on in Genesis chapter 19. In Genesis uh, chapter 19, God is sick of Sodom and Gomorrah, and God is so sick of Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, listen, uh, I'm going to be done uh, with these people. These people no longer want to follow me. These people no longer want to heed to my instructions. They don't want to heed to my teaching. And so what God uh, uh, brings uh, to Abraham, and as God is bringing to Lot in Genesis chapter 19, is what he states is, this is the end. God says, I'm doing something new, and this is the end. There are some individuals in Sodom and Gomorrah that I want to save. His name is Lot. He's married, and he has children. His name is Lot. He's married, and he has children. I don't want you to miss the lesson on this morning. God says, I'm done with this and I'm gonna do something new. I'm done with this, and I'm about to do something new. Uh, many times at this time of the year, people get excited, uh, and, and the reason why children uh, will get excited is because they're gonna receive something. They're, 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 they're gonna receive something. Uh, it didn't matter what they received uh, last year. It doesn't matter what they had. And, uh, you know, that matter of fact, that's irrelevant. Matter of fact, last year could have been amazing. But this is a new, this, this is a new year. And so what this time of the year, uh, the children's expectation rises uh, because, <laughs> right, the, the expectation rises because in their mind, in their mind, they believe, they believe I'm going to receive something new. I'm, I'm going to receive something new. Matter of fact, uh, around normal time this time of year, uh, you don't see children holding on the old stuff. You don't, you don't see them holding on the old stuff. Matter of fact, what they do is they try to clear space uh, because they put out their petitions and they start expecting something they start expecting something new. And every now and then, every now and then, God will come in and says, listen, what I'm about to do is I'm about to clear your plate and uh, something new is coming. So something new is coming. That's what's happening in Genesis chapter 19. God sends two angels to Lot. And when he sends two angels to Lot, what he's trying to prepare Lot to do is say, hey, listen, I need you to get ready because I'm about to remove something old and I'm about to give you something, I'm about to give you something new. Now, depending on your attitude, your disposition and your spirit, that's going to have a lot to do with how well you receive the thing that God has prepared for you. 
I know that many times that God can have something wonderful for us, but because you got a bad attitude, you don't receive it in the way that you should because you so infatuated with what you used to have, but you don't have that no more. Does anybody go to bed crying over an old job they used to have? Does anybody remember? Uh, there are many people who reminisce over what they used to have. And it's not that you miss the old job. Sometimes you miss the, the zeros. Some, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's not the people. You don't miss the people. Sometimes you miss the, you miss the zeros at that, at that old job. Or, or, or you kind of reminisce over what, you, over what you used to have. But when God gets ready, what happens when God gets ready to do something brand brand new. I want to say this, and for those who are taking notes, I want you to keep this in your spirit. I want you to keep this in your heart. God never removes something without having a plan for something new. Don't you ever think that if you lose something, that God had not made preparations. God is not a God that's spontaneous. We don't serve a spontaneous God. We serve a detailed God. Matter of fact, you just read it in Psalms 40, or 147 when the Bible says he counts the stars and he knows all the stars by name. The Bible says he knows every hair on your head. The Bible says he knows where the wind is going and he knows the blade. Matter of fact, the Bible says that God feeds and take care of the flowers and the birds. You don't ever have to stress about what you shall eat, what you shall wear, or where you should stay because God has already made provisions. Many times we stress is when we step out of the will of God. And whenever you step out of the will of God, then you're probably worried or stressed because you have not heeded the voice of God or his instructions. The Bible says it is God that orders our steps. If God has ordered our steps, then you don't have to worry about the next step. So whenever God gets rid of something or whenever God removes something, you never have to stress about the next step. If you're at home and your phone rings, and you get a call, somebody says something has ended or something is over, you don't ever have to worry about the next day. God already knew yesterday you was going to get the call today and God is already sitting in the Mars, says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy. I'm going to give you some rest, right? When you come unto me, you never have to. Matter of fact, when they say that a certain industry is, is ending, I remember, uh, I was talking to uh, some other brothers last week, I remember uh, it was, it would be like Friday night, when I, when I was growing up, like Friday night, Saturday night, we get excited, we get in the car, some of you have been there before, we get in the car, you had to drive maybe about one or two blocks, and after you drove about one or two blocks, we would get out the car, because it was Friday night. And we would get out, we'd get out the car, and we would go inside to pick our movie at Blockbuster, <laughs> at Blockbuster Video. You could see us on, on, on any random Friday night, we would be walking down the aisles. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember you, you walking? And if somebody was to ask in this generation, what you doing? We picking out a movie. We picking out a movie. And you would want to pick it at the right time because uh, you, you only had a two-day rental, and you had to make sure it was rewinded. Uh, they would charge you. <laughs> they would charge you if you didn't rewind the tape uh, uh, and get it back. And, and them, and them uh, overdue fees. Them, 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 if, if you don't turn it back on Sunday, uh, don't put it back in the box. And I, re I remember a time, uh, but then I remember that was a blockbuster in every city and almost on every block if you wanted to get your movies. And they call it Blockbuster Video. Blockbuster Video. Uh, but, but when that ended, right? When, when that ended, and like, matter of fact, when certain things ended, I, re I, remember, I remember a time, I, I remember a time that if you wanted somebody to get something, you had to get in the car, you had to drive down to the post office, and you had to put the mail in the 
Some of y'all ain't seen a mailbox in two and three years. When was the last? Some of y'all ain't bought stamps. Some of y'all, you have stamps somewhere, but you don't even know where your stamps are uh, anymore. That was a, that was a, that was a season. Y'all, y'all remember a season where you had to drive down the street and you had to get a cart and you had to go get groceries. And now you could stay at home in your pajamas and you could hit a few buttons and get that little ring at the door, and you can get your milk and your eggs, and you can get whatever you need uh, at the door, right? And, and so you, you never have to worry about something ending, because normally when something's ending, it's because something is taking its, something is taking its place. Some of us, many times, some of us, we grieve. We grieve because we feel like if we lose something, God will never replace it. I want to say this, and I want to drive this home. God never removes anything without having a plan. God never takes anything away without having a plan for you. God will never leave you in any season and in any environment without what you need. Now, you may not have what you want, but God never leaves you in a season where you don't have what you need to make it. Now, I don't have everything that I want today, but I have everything I need today to be able to make it. Matter of fact, God has equipped me with everything that I need to be successful and to glorify him today. You can focus and cry over all the stuff that you want and maybe you don't have what you want, but you cannot claim or you cannot indict God for not giving you everything that you need today. Right now, you have everything that you need. Right now, you have everything that you need to glorify God and to make it through this day. There's never a day that you have woken up and God has not given you everything you need to be able to make it. And some of us have faced some very difficult days. Some of us have faced some very hard days. There are some days that you woke up and you say, you know what, I really don't even want to see this day. But guess what? You made it through. Every difficult day you've ever had, guess what? You made it through that day. You have successfully made, made, you may have gotten out on a limp. You may have, you may have had a few scars. You may have faced a few things. You may have faced a few battles, but there has never been a day that God has not given you everything you need to make it through it. So on this particular day, in Genesis chapter 19, God is coming to Lot. He sends two messengers and he says, listen, this is ending. This, this right here, this is your home. You've raised your children here. This is, you're familiar with this place. This is what you know. But what I want to let you know right now is this right here, this, this, <laughs> this right here, this is ending. And, and I got something else for you, but I want to let you know you can't stay here. You can't stay here. Have God ever, have God ever put you in a situation where God ever forced you out of a situation faster than you wanted? Amen. And you realize that what you're doing right now has nothing to do with your desires, that everything that you're doing right now has everything to do with God's timing and what he's doing. It's not on you. It's on God. Have you ever been on God's time? Whole church to say amen. You, and, and if you didn't know it, now you're about to realize it's God's timing. So he says this in verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that the messengers of God said, escape for your life. God is removing this place. You're in this place and you can't stay here much longer. He says, escape for your, for your life. Look not behind thee. Now, I need you to understand. There was only one rule. And the only rule was don't what? Don't turn around. The only rule is don't what? Don't turn around. Hey, when it's time to go, what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to reminisce. How many of you got in trouble because you 
you was reminiscing. Let me tell you the problem with reminiscing. <laughs> Let me tell you the problem with reminiscing. When you reminisce, you always edit out the bad things. You know what you say? You say, you know what? I remember the good old days. Which one, which one were the, was, was the good ones? <laughs> the same days that you prayed to God to get you out of. Sometimes you'll get to reminiscing and say, now that was, we, then we have fun back there. You forgot the tears. You forgot the, oh God, can you get me out of this? Oh, I can't, I can't wait to, don't you remember when you said I can't wait till I grow up? You remember how miserable you were? You said, I can't wait till I get out of here and I can't wait till I get on my, and I can't wait till I do my own and I can't wait to, remember you kept saying you couldn't wait. Matter, remember how, how excited you were to be able to be where you are today? Don't you realize many of you are literally sitting in the, in the state that you prayed for years ago? And you're sitting here with a sour face, acting like you ain't got no joy or happiness. And, and this was the season. This is the season you were on your knees asking God for, God, if you could just bring me to this place. And not a, not a Lord that brought you to this place and you looking around. I didn't think it was going to be like this. <laughs> I thought it was going to be better than this. He says, listen, he says, don't look. Don't look back. It's not good to look. It's not it's not good to look back. It's there is a reason why you glance in the rearview mirror but you keep your eyes focused on the, on the front mirror. Can I tell you something? If God brought you out of it, don't go back. If God delivered you from them, don't go back. If God rescued you from that schedule, don't go. <laughs> he was... He, he rescued you. For many of you, I, I've told this before, I used to work the night shift. I used to, I used to work the night shift. I used, to, I used to go in, I used to go in at um, nine o'clock and I used to come out at six in the morning. And if we did overtime, it'd be like six, seven, eight, sometimes in the morning. I used, to, I used to work that night shift. I used to work that night shift. And the floors were all cement. And I was like, man, we can't get no carpet up in this mug or something like that. You know, <laughs> and I, floors was all cement. And I used to work in a warehouse. I used to work in a warehouse. And I used to go in at nine and I used to come out at six. And by the time that I was going home, some of y'all know, you, you go home and everybody's going to, and you sleepy and you trying to go, <laughs> and you trying to, you trying to go home. And, and so I, I remember, I remember being, I was always believing. It, it won't always. <laughs> I didn't know the song at the time, but in my spirit, this is what I felt. <laughs> That's what I wanted to be able to sing down the aisle. Like it, it won't always be. It, it won't always be like this. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna change. It's, it has to change. It gotta, it gotta change. <laughs> And I remember, sometimes I remember being at lunch and I was eating my, my peanut. <laughs> I, was eating, I remember I eating my peanut butter and jelly sandwich and I had my little, I had my little juice. And my break was, my break was at like three, four o'clock in the morning. You know, that was, was like my break, three in the morning. I said, this isn't, this isn't natural. <laughs> I should be, I should be asleep. <laughs> and I'm trying to eat my lunch at three in the morning. <laughs> trying to eat my lunch, but I'm, but I'm tired. But I'm trying to say my body weary. <laughs> my body weary and I'm trying to, I'm trying to eat. I'm just, I'm struggling. And I remember, I remember praying. Oh Lord. Or I'm talking about the type of prayers I prayed back then. Working that night shift, two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm hiding behind aisle J and K. 
because I'm trying to catch a nap. <laughs> I'm acting like I'm looking for supplies, but I'm <laughs> leaning up against the pole. I'm tired. I'm... And I said, Lord, if you can just give me, Lord, if you, oh, God, I promise. Oh, I'll, I'll eat two communion cups. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll worship you. I'll just, <laughs> I'll give more. Like, I just, if you, you know, just, Lord, just tell me what you want me to do. Just, and guess what? The Lord answered my prayer. The Lord answered my prayer. And uh, so, I don't, I don't know if you, anybody know, like, I started working for uh, UPS. But I had to start from the bottom. And when you start, when you work from the bottom, they put you on the trucks. Yeah. What I'm saying is I was working a night shift and I, I don't need to get off and I'm praying. I prayed and the Lord delivered me from that. And that's when I learned. And so I started working for UPS and I, I, I started working for UPS in the summertime in Texas. And so, uh, and so uh, when I, when I, first started, uh, you know, when I, when I first started, we we'll just fast forward, we don't have time. So I, I lost about, uh, I lost about 20 pounds on accident. And so, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was an accident. And so uh, I, we had to, we had to unload all the trucks. And I remember being on the conveyor belt. <laughs> And I was like, and I, and I remember I got to a point where I was like, I wanted to stop. I just want to quit. <laughs> I want to quit. I like, <laughs> this grown adult thing is like not, I had put out, I had put out so many applications and this is what I'm doing. And, and as I'm doing this, I realized, wait a minute, I prayed for this. I prayed for this. I prayed for this. I prayed for this. I prayed. I prayed. I prayed for this. I prayed to God that he would deliver me from the night shift. And... <laughs> and I prayed, and I prayed, but now I want him to deliver me again. I, I want to be delivered again. It's, this is not, and so, and I, and I realize, I realize in that season, I need to be more specific. I was broad. But straight is the gate. And narrow is that. I was too broad. I, straight is the gate. I should have, I should have focused in my prayer. I needed to put air conditioning in my prayer. I, need, I needed to put seats in my prayer and a screen or something in my prayer. I just I didn't, I wasn't specific. I wasn't specific enough. And I and I realized God is good. Because he answered all of my, like when I look back, God answered every single one of my prayers. When I asked the Lord to deliver me from something, I may have had to wait like a year or so. You may have to wait a few years. But you know, as I stand today, I don't deal with that thing no more. That's, a, that's some weights that you were carrying and you prayed a long time ago and guess what? You don't carry that weight no more. That's, that's a route you used to take. Notice, you, don't, you ain't even been down that street in years. You can have a flashback. What I'm saying is, but whenever God deliver you, don't go back. If the Lord has ever brought you out of sin and you ever been delivered from sin, there are some sins, they, they gnaw at you. 
You wake up with it. You go to bed with it. You carry it all day long. There are some sins. That there, there are some sins you just can't get off. That there, there are some sins it takes a minute to walk out of. There are some people who have been conditioned for sin. So when they're trying to give their life to Jesus Christ, it takes a minute to walk out of that sin. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if God ever deliver you from something, don't go back to them streets again. Don't respond to them text messages again. Don't drive, by, don't drive down them old uh, 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 neighborhoods and go to them old houses. Don't meet up with them old people again, because you know what? That old nature going to rise. And you, and you know what kills something new? When you attach to something old and you can't fully appreciate the something new. When you, can't, when, when you can't fully let go of your past, you ruin your present. And today is such a present. Today is such a present. But you're going to ruin today wishing you had something yesterday. And you know what? There's a great possibility that yesterday you messed something up. There's a great possibility that maybe the reason why you don't have certain things is maybe because you didn't manage it well. There's a great possibility. There is a great possibility. There's a great possibility you didn't do what you're supposed to do. But what good is it waking up every morning thinking about yesterday when God is doing something new today? There are some of you you beat yourself up. There are some of you, you beat yourself up because of the version of who you were yesterday does not match who you desire to be tomorrow. You know the, you know the, 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 the reason why forgiveness is, such heal, is so healing? Because forgiveness is about letting go. Forgiveness is about letting go and not reminiscing over the past. It, matter of fact, it doesn't allow you to be stuck. Some people who are stuck, they look like this. Some, some people who are stuck is because they keep doing this. But when you free, when you free and you focused, some of us are not reaching our goals because you're not focused. You distracted. You actually distracted with things that God has already delivered you from. You just going back and visiting. Sometimes you just gotta let it go. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta go ahead and have the ceremony. Sometimes you gotta go ahead and, 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 and do the memorial. And sometimes you say, hey, you know what? That's not, that I wanted that life. That's not the life that I'm gonna have, but God got something better. If you don't believe that God got something better, if your future is this way, you will turn your back to your future because you all focused on something that God won't go back and give you. Especially when the season is past. Hey, the season is past. And I wish they would bring it back. But guess what? They ain't never coming back again. Good times is never coming back on television again. And I had a good time watching good times, <laughs> right? JJ, <laughs> right? Having a, hey, wasn't it funny? And all that was, uh, hey, but guess what? The season's over. They're not coming back. They're not coming back to do no, they're not coming back to do no shows. I know some of y'all go to, I know some of y'all go to concerts and, 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 the, and the people doing the concert, they be, uh, they be 75 years old. <laughs> Still singing, still singing your jams, and you're, and you're trying to remember, he need to sit down somewhere. He tired, look at him, he tired. He weary after two songs, he need to sit down. He need, need to sit down, and then half the audience sitting down too because they can't, but trying to remember, trying to remember the good old days. Hey man, you too old to be wearing them kind of jeans. You need to, you need to go sit down somewhere. Take this brother to the khaki section and get this brother so. 
<laughs> he trying to show up, hey, when the season is past, you got to let it. How many of you have a problem with letting things? You keep talking about it. Hey, it's a new year. And you can't keep talking about it. Because the stuff that you're talking about is 2021. That's a, 20, that's a 2021 situation you're talking about. Hey, you got to let that. Let me tell you what happened to me. Hey, it, it, was it this decade? If it, if it wasn't, hey, was it in the last five years? Or something that was too, hey, especially as the months start calculating and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the years start adding up, you know what you got to start saying? Hey, I got to stop talking about old news. I got to stop. So he says, this. he says, listen, I need you to escape for your life, but don't look behind you, neither stay in the plane. He said, listen, I need, you to, I need you to hear these instructions. As you're leaving and going into your new estate, don't look behind. You know how some people get you caught up? Some people get you caught up because they want, they want you to slow down and talk to them. And, and they want to they wanna bring you back to emotions and feelings and situations that you didn't, wait, wait a minute, I, I didn't already graduate from these things. My college sent me a, a letter uh, after I had graduated and they said now that you, you're an alumni, we want you to come. Mm -mm. <laughs> All them threatens, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> y'all were threatening me that I wasn't going to graduate. <laughs> we not finna, we not finna come back together and, <laughs> and sit at the table and then you go ask for a donation. No, I, I've been delivered. <laughs> it's not going back. Because you're going to find a discrepancy and try to take my degree. <laughs> nah, I got my paper. He says, when, he says, don't look back. Notice the second thing. But don't stay in the plane. See, sometimes the devil got you again. Because you had repented for your sins, but you stayed in the same state. You stayed accessible. See, when you get delivered, you can't be accessible. Hey, can I touch? Uh, click, click, click. Uh -huh. <laughs> you gotta lock the door. You gotta remove. You gotta remove yourself. If you're struggling with something, and you vow to not do that thing again, you can't stay in the same plane. You can't stay around it. Because you know what's going to happen? The memory is going to flood back. The smell is going to flood back. You're going you gonna, to you gonna have, have memories and, and certain things. Hey, all pictures are not good. All pictures are not good. I, listen, I don't want to remember every year. You, hey, you can block out some of that stuff. Hey, everything is not a good flashback. Some of our stories are like, is like Mr. Scrooge. Just nothing but trauma and sadness and darkness. You don't want to remember all of that. Hey, stop torturing yourself remembering things that God delivered you from. Hey, I'm not the same person that I was in 2005. The things that I did in 2005, I wouldn't do them today. I'm not the same person that I was in 2005. I also want to let you know, the person in 2005 actually no longer exists. Some of you are grieving over versions of yourself that actually don't even exist anymore. Do you remember? Mm -mm. That person ain't, that person gone. Do you know how I can reach you? I don't, I don't even know how to reach you. 
That version is not, we're not the same. Don't stay in the, number one church, don't look back. And number two, don't stay in the what? Don't stay in the plane. If God is moving you, then move on. When God show you the signs, don't sit there and question the sign. Is it really yield? Is it should? So what is yield to you? If, <laughs> it was stop. Hey, if the light say if, if the light is green, you need to go. But if the light is green, don't look behind you. You gonna you gonna you gonna get in an accident. You gonna mess up your blessing. Don't look back and don't stay in the plane. Escape to the mountain, lest you be what. Now, here, here's the dangerous thing about the mountain. He didn't know what was in the mountains. He's never lived in the mountains before. But here's something that's real clear. God is no longer blessing me in this place. So if I'm going to receive my next blessing, it's not going to be here. Now, y'all can stay, but I got to go to where God is sending me because my next blessing is by God's command, not by nostalgia. Next verse, here we are in verse 18. And Lot said, oh, not so, my Lord. Doesn't that sound like us? Oh, no, I don't want to leave. I mean, it's so comfortable here. Matter of fact, I just got used to, listen, you always want to go where God is going. And I'm going to tell you this, I don't care how beautiful it looks on the other side, if God is not in it, that ain't the place you want to go. If God is not in it, that's not where you want to be. The Bible says, he says, oh no, uh, uh, not so, my Lord. Verse 19, behold now, thy servant have found grace in thy sight, and you have magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain. He said, oh God, you're so merciful, and you're so full of grace, and, and you're so full of goodness, and God, you saved my life. Let me stay here. You know what, you, you, you know what kills our future? What kills our future is our imagination of how we think where we are is the best. You have this idea and you have taught yourself and you've allowed your imagination to take hold thinking, hey, I think this is the best that I'm going to receive. And so when you do that, you try to make the best out of what you have. But what you don't realize is eyes have not and ears have not what the Lord has prepared. So if the Lord is preparing something, you know what the Lord would do first before he give you something? If, if you over there eating crackers, if, if you over there eating crackers and I got a fine steak for you, what I want to do is I want to remove the crackers because we need to make room for the, we got to make room for the steak. Are y'all making room for the steak? Are you holding on to the crackers because crackers is what you had for so long and, and actually it's kind of pretty good. Have you, have you ever dipped them in, in some ranch and dipped them in some barbecue sauce? This ranch is kind of pretty good. Huh? I, 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 I like these, I like these crackers. You may like the crackers, but if the Lord has something better for you, what the, I, I want you to understand something. What the waiter will always do before they bring the main course is they would clear the table. And we start crying to God when the table starts getting cleared because we don't believe anything else is coming. They're going to remove plates. They're going to make room. What if right now you're in a season where God is actually just making room? Thank you, Lord. You know what? We got a gift for you. 
And the gift is, we're going to give you a brand new living room set. Right? And right, and matter, matter of fact, we want to let you know right now, while you're sitting in worship, there's a truck sitting outside your place with a brand new living room set, couch, table, all of this. Love seat, the little pillow with a little cushion thing that you like or whatever with the, got the remote control, got the, all this, all this set up for you. You, you know what, you know what most of you would say? You would tell the movers, hey, hold on for a second. Because in order for you to bring that in, I got to take this out. So, if God is a good God, before he even brings something new, he'll start taking stuff out. If you ever find yourself in a season where you lose it, matter of fact, you should, you should get excited. If you, ever find, if you ever find yourself in a season where things are being taken from you and you're starting to lose certain things, you should start getting real excited. Oh, God, well, I'm excited because then you have to be doing something, making preparations, because you're not a spontaneous God. So if you knew that I was going to lose in this season, then that means in the next season, I need to be prepared to receive. Never, never be so down when things start being taken from you. Have you ever been in that situation where you're trying to hold and keep everything together and you can't? And then there is a peace that comes over you and you say, all right, I just got to let it. OK, we'll just let it all go. Have you ever have you ever fought your hardest to keep somebody in your life and you fought your hardest, you fought your hardest. And then that's something. And there's nothing that you do. You could do. There's nothing that you could do. And then you have to say, okay. Hey, that, that yielding to God's will oh, is a peace. So that when people look at you, they're confused. They say, well, why, well, why are you smiling? Because I'm not in control. Amen. Amen. And it, it feels like everything's being taken. But guess what? You'll be over there saying, Jesus, he will fix it for me. Oh, he knows. And you'll just be singing to yourself. All of a sudden, all them church songs start. Savior, lead me less. I pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior. I really love the Lord. I really love the Lord. And you, hey, listen, you'll be in your own devotion. There's a, there's a yielding that takes place. There's a, there's a letting go that happens. And that's when you know, hey, I trust in God. God got this. It's not my job to feed myself, take care of myself, protect my, it's God's job. And God, just like you gave it to me, have y'all been in, in certain seasons where certain things were just coming to you and you, you, you didn't even control it? You just felt like, man, I got a hot hand, everything. And you just felt blessed on every end. And you just like, oh, the blessings just keep coming. Hey, just, just the same way that God can flood your life with blessings, he can also look in your environment and say, you got too many fake friends. You're not going to grow in that situation. That ain't really what your heart desires to be holding on to that. And there's a better life that I even envision for you if you would just let your old life go. Man, being a Christian, I mean, well, what, what are we going to do now that I, you know, you don't, even, you don't even realize the joy and the peace of walking with God in holiness than when you were out there in the world chasing and running after things. You don't even know what real freedom is until you become a Christian and give your whole heart to God. Oh, it's free. oh, you're free. So he says, listen, I need you to go to the place that's unknown because if you stay here, you're going to die. All right. We're in the next verse, verse 20. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto thee, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one, and my soul shall live? You trying to bargain. 
Well, can I just do this? And, and, and can I just do that? Many times when it, when it comes to sin, you got to burn it all. If you just leave a little bit, you can, matter of fact, you can't even leave a little bit. Because it'll bring you right back into that trap again. Many times there's a routine of sin. Many times there's a, there's a routine of sin. And in order to let that old life go, you got to let everything and everyone, sometimes you got to let them go in that environment so that you can be what God has called you to be. He says, do I have to go way over? Can I just do this, right? Can, can it just be in the, still in the vicinity? We're in verse 21. And he said unto him, see, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also that I will not overthrow this city for which thou hast spoken. Verse 22. Hasty, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till you become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. Verse 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. I'm almost done, church. What's number one? We ain't looking back. And number two, you can't stay in the plane. When God is moving, you got to, hey, listen, and whenever you get focused, you frustrate the people around you. Whenever you get your eyes locked on what God has for you and, and you woke and you wake up with focus and determination, you frustrate other people who are distracted because they used to have more access and they used to have more time. And, but, but then you don't have time for that because God is moving and you need to move. And so the Bible lets us know here we are. You didn't already receive the instructions. The instructions was don't turn back. And you can't stay in the plane. And I want you to go to the unknown. God is doing something new. The Bible says that Lot takes his family and they all move. The instructions for the whole family is don't turn around. Don't look back. Looking back, delays are cancels your trip. What you don't realize is that the time that you turned around to entertain your past, you missed the blessing that God had for you. See, some of us think we can entertain our past and still be ready to receive from God at the same time. What you don't realize is that moment that you turned around, you don't know the blessing that was passing by. Jesus said it like this, any man who walks with him but turns back is not fit for the kingdom. Looking back, Paul said it like this, if I've learned anything, I'm not looking back back. He says, I'm, I'm pressing forward to the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. He says, I'm, I'm pressing forward. He says, Paul said like this, if I've learned anything, not to look back. Stop looking back to your 20s. Stop Looking, stop looking back to your teenage years. Stop looking back to your 30s or your 40s or your 50s. You are where you are. Looking back ruins the, you said about 1989. If we looked at you today and said, well, well what's going on? You, you, you almost ashamed to even talk about why you feeling down today because everything back there is gone. Matter, matter of fact, if you went back to that same street, 
They got new stores. They got new, matter of fact, the same people don't even work there no more. You can go back to that same school. Matter of fact, everybody, didn't, a lot of people didn't moved and went on and, and happened on with life. Have you ever tried to catch up? Have you ever try, tried to catch up with friends or something like that? And, and you couldn't because they were all living their life? Or maybe they, somebody was trying to catch up with you and you'd be like, hey, uh, you know, maybe when I get off work or something, what you want to talk about? But, you know, I just wanted to catch up through the good old times. Uh, I mean, I got, I work tomorrow. Like, you know, <laughs> let's do this another time or something like that. People that moved on, don't be the ones circling around trying to remember the good old days. And you missing these days. You got this day right here. This day is a blessing. Don't take yesterday's sadness and ruin today. Don't, don't, don't do that. So he says this. They're going, and as they're going, God is starting to, to rain fire and what? I'm almost finished. He got fire and brimstone. Now, now I, I need you to understand something. As Lot and his family are moving, they ain't no sprinters. This, is, this ain't no track family. You know, the fire and brimstone is coming from heaven. The angel says, I want you to walk forward. I want you to move. Don't delay, but don't look back and don't stay in the plane, which means God is purposely doing this. God is purposely sending down fire and brimstone as they move. It's the fire and brimstone is not covering all around them. In front of them, they're safe. So as long as they stay focused and they get to where they're going, they don't have to worry because God won't accidentally drop a brimstone on, you know, <laughs> right? Which means every place of the brimstone and fire is strategically placed by God to only be behind them, right? So as they're moving, they're good as long as the family, come on church, as long as the family stays focused, and they move ahead, then they don't have to worry about the, they don't have to worry about the past. Now they lose some stuff, but God is gonna make some provisions. You ain't gotta worry about what's it, because God's gonna take care of that. The Bible says, God didn't start at the barbecue, cook off, right? Everything's happening. He cooking and he doing what he doing. They moving. In verse 25, I can imagine the sound of when you're losing something Amen. and stuff that you worked real hard for is now being removed. He overthrew those cities and all the what? That's why it's not good for you to stay in the plane because, you know, God's wrath is over all unrighteousness. So when you repent of your sins and you remove yourself from a sinful state, God's wrath is going gonna, is gonna to clear all of that up. It's not good for you to be in that house of sin. It's not good for you to be in that plane of sin because when the Lord gets ready to clean how you don't want to be a part. You want to be removed. You want to get out of there. What we say about sin, we don't care about what sin you committed. Just don't live in it. Amen. Ah, because if you live in it, when God comes, everybody in the house going to get it. That's why I like to know who my friend's enemies are. Because we, if we all in the same, I need to know if you got a whole lot of enemies. Hey, I can only talk to you on the phone. We can't go nowhere. Hey, man, you want to hang out? No, nah, man, you got too many enemies. Because <laughs> if you catch it, then I got to go in the fight. And I don't know how many. And I don't even know what you've been doing. And I don't even know why you got so many enemies. I mean, you cool with me, but you got a lot of enemies. And if you got a lot of enemies, we can't hang out in public. I see you at night. 
but we can't hang out in public. Because what, what happens when, when somebody sees their enemy? Everybody, everybody in there gonna get it. Everybody in there gonna get it. When the, when, the, when the postman was angry and he decided he was finna go back to the job and he, he went postal, everybody working that shift. It don't matter if it was your first day. It don't matter if it was your last day. It don't matter, it don't, it don't matter if you was a supervisor or whatever. When that person walked up in that same spot, everybody was gonna get it. God deals with sin. Sin is the enemy of God. And when God, when God sees sin, all, that whole space going to get it. So you don't ever want to be, y'all remember what happened to Jonah? And when, when Jonah was on the ship, right? And that storm came, it didn't just come for Jonah. The Bible says everybody on that ship was about to die. And what was the solution? Hey, doc, man, you got to get off. <laughs> hey, 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 listen, either we throw you overboard or we die with you. Notice. That's how God calls a storm. Some storms you could be going through because of the place you sit in. It's not even your storm. When it start raining, when it start raining, who's sinning? Who, this, ain't, this ain't my storm. I know my storm. My storm hit from the east. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this ain't my sin. Somebody, sometimes you're going through it because you're around other people who live in an ungodly life and you reap what you and what goes around, and I don't want to be in the plane when I see it. Hey, I got to get out of here. I see your, I see your safe and it come back around. I got to get out of here. <laughs> I got to get out of, I got to get out of the land. They had to throw Jonah overboard because they said, this is your storm. And wherever you are, everybody's going to get it. So in order to save us, we got to throw you. The Bible says when they threw him overboard, the storm stopped and the Lord had prepared a fish. Imagine if you was Jonah's road dog. You'd been in that fish. You'd have died in that fish and he'd have been delivered. You'd have been tuna hanging out with Jonah. Hey, this is his storm. That's his fish. These, God's trying to get his attention and anybody hanging out with Jonah is finna catch it. That's why it pays for you to repent of your sins. This is why it pays for you to come to the Lord. This is why it pays so that you can receive the grace and the mercy. As long as they're focused and moving forward, the cities and all that is burning up, but nothing is happening to them. I mean, it's a little warm, but ain't nothing happening, right? The Bible says in verse 26, verse 26, but his wife, going, Everybody's, everybody's moving, got the children moving, got the dog. Hey, everybody good, everybody good. Don't look, don't look back. Hey, and don't stop. Because if you stop, you're going to catch it. Sometimes God wants you to move on and you stuck. You need to move on, tell a different story. If this is a new year, hey, start telling a new story. Make up one until you get one. <laughs> Create a new narrative. Find the joy in life. Find the happiness in life. If you spent the last five years in depression, start looking for better days. It's going to turn around. Now be specific in what you pray for. <laughs> You'll be on that truck like me. <laughs> right? <laughs> The Bible says they're moving along. And I don't know if she heard something. I don't know if she, she was missing something. Hey, it's okay to miss. But miss moving forward. I sure miss that. But keep moving forward. Don't miss something and then turn around. It's, a, it's, it's okay to long for something that you used to have. It's emotions. It's okay to have emotions. What I'm saying is, don't turn around and don't stay in the plane. Miss it and cry about it while moving forward. Yeah. But his wife looked back from behind him. She was following him. 
Lot's leading his family. He's going, okay, we're going we gonna to get out of here. We, God got something better for us. Baby. Baby. Sugar. Sugar. Salt. <laughs> he was asking for sugar and she became that table salt. <laughs> <laughs> that straight, that straight sea, uh, sea salt. When she turned around, the Bible says she became immediately. She stayed in the position when she turned around. You know what the saddest part about this story? Not only did he lose a wife, but it didn't matter how much he loved her, he couldn't go back and get her. You would think if you have your love, your love would be like, now you know what don't make sense? What doesn't make sense is why would you have two cans of salt on the same table? You only need one. I can't turn around. He can't even back up, baby. <laughs> She's not there. The Lord allowed this to be in the word of God for a reason. Don't turn around. If I brought you out of sin, if I brought you out of a bad place, or maybe I'm answering your prayer and I'm bringing you to where you need to be. Don't ruin what God has for you. And you keep turning around. Because after you turn around, you will cancel the blessing that God has for you. How many blessings have you already missed because you was focused on yesterday? How many things that were supposed to be in your possession, but you didn't end up receiving it because you were focused on things behind you? Matter of fact, it's not even good to be focused on people who talk about you behind your back. Sometimes people uh, come, you know, people talk about you all the time. Did you hear what they said? I would have to stop, turn around and go back there to find out what they said. I don't know what they said. Some people get mad at you when you don't know what people didn't said about you behind your back. And then they want to catch you up. But in order to catch you up, hey, hey, listen, if I didn't miss them episodes, I just want to keep watching. I ain't got time to be going back. I'm not going to watch the whole, I don't want to watch the whole thing. And sometimes, have y'all ever gone back to an episode and you realize that was just a waste of my time? They do the recap at the beginning of each, uh, each episode. I didn't even have to go back and watch all that. I could just find out what's going on and then move on. I learned that tool from my grandmother. I, I learned that tool from my grandmother. Uh, and, and the way that I, I, I learned that, that tool is uh, sometimes my grandma would, would miss her shows. She, she would miss a few. And, and, and back then, they didn't do reruns of soap operas. And so sometimes they would turn on and you'd be like, okay, now what happened to Michael? My, why, why Michael uh, uh, shot? I thought he was dead. And then somebody, and sometimes Michael would knock on the door and he'd be back and he'll just stand there and they go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you like, now this is crazy. I thought Michael didn't die. Hey, but listen, ain't no point of going back. Hey, just keep watching. Matter of fact, there's a song we used to sing. We'll understand it better. By and by. There's no song that says go back. The children of Israel died because they were trying to go back to, they were trying to go back to Egypt. Church, don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to Egypt. If God didn't deliver you, don't go back to Egypt. When they pop back around in the neighborhood again, don't go back to Egypt. When you find this, you know you're free. Don't respond. Don't respond to the text message. 
Don't respond to the email. Don't, don't respond to the phone call. You've been delivered. You free. Matter of fact, you've been smiling for the first time in years. And the devil saw you. The devil heard you giggling. And he calling you from behind you. Hey, can, can, hey, can I get your attention? Hey, if I didn't already pass you, you're going to have to catch up in order to talk. But don't turn up. Don't turn around. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian, don't turn around. But if you have been turning around on this morning, you have the opportunity to set your affections on things above. You have the opportunity to reach ahead and grab something. You don't even realize it actually is better in front of you. You sad about what you just left, but what you don't realize is actually better in front of you. So, matter of fact, for some of you, some of you, that's some people who are literally praying for your, your current situation right now. There's somebody looking at you across the way and saying, oh, Lord, if I could just be in a situation. How would you feel if somebody looking at you right now and they go to God asking to have your problems? I know what you're thinking. You don't know what's on the side of the street. <laughs> Stay over there. You don't know what's on the side of the street. Hey, but what you don't realize is sometimes your situation is better than somebody else's. You don't even realize how blessed you are. And we talk about our blessings in the perspective of what God has brought us out of. All right? And if God has brought you out of some stuff, then rejoice in the Lord today and move forward with them. If you're here and you're not a Christian, please believe it's our prayer that the Lord wants you to start something new and he wants you to start something new with him. You can begin your walk with Jesus Christ today by believing that he died for you, that he was buried, and that he rose again. If you'll be willing to believe that, repent of your sins and confess he is the son of God, then today you can have all your sins washed away. But you know what you have to do? You got to let go. You got to let go of what you know. And you got to reach forth and be willing to receive what he has for you. He has a better life. Somebody said, I'm going to lose all my friends. Somebody said, you know, what about this and what about that? But you don't realize God never takes anything away from you without making preparations to provide for you in the next season. He's an awesome father, and he will give you everything that you need. The Lord is praying for his church that we might all be one. That we might all be one. Oh, that we might all be one.